In this video, we're going to discuss how to use the average cost method to calculate cost of goods sold and ending inventory for a company that uses the perpetual inventory system. So let's start with an example, and we'll assume that beginning inventory for a retail company is zero, okay, and then we've got a series of purchases throughout the period, and then we have a sale. So they start out by buying 20 units at $35 a unit, and then they purchase 30 units for $40 a unit, and then on January 8th, they end up selling 40 units. Now, because this company is using a perpetual inventory system, that means the following. Every time there's a purchase, we're going to adjust the inventory account. Okay, so we're going to increase the inventory account every time there's inventory purchased. Now, when inventory is sold on January 8th, we're going to debit the cost of goods sold, so we're going to increase cost of goods sold, and we're going to decrease inventory to recognize the fact that we've gotten rid of some inventory here. Okay, there will also be a credit to sales and so forth, but let's just focus on the inventory here and the cost of goods sold. So, because we're using a perpetual method, we do not wait until the end of the period. We don't wait till the end of the period. So we say, okay, as of January 8th, we need to make an entry where we're gonna debit cost of goods sold and we're gonna credit inventory. And the question is, how much? How much are we gonna do that for? So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to come up with the average cost. And when I say average cost, think about it like this. At 20 units bought at $35 a unit, 30 units at $40 a unit. So we could come up with the average cost and then multiply that by 40 units and that'll give us the cost of goods sold. So take the 20 times the 35, okay, so that's $700 plus the 30 times the 40, okay, so that's all the money that was paid for inventory up until this point, okay, and then we divide it by 50. The reason is because we bought 50 units of inventory up until this point. Now notice, we ignore this. For the time being, we ignore the inventory that's purchased on January 13th. Why? Because as of January 8th, that hasn't happened yet, right? We have not done this. We're making a journal entry on January 8th. We don't even know what's going to happen on January 13th or anything going forward. So that's not going to factor into our average cost, okay? So our average cost is here, okay? And that comes out to $38 a unit. So let me just write that. This, this whole thing, oops, here. This whole thing here in this circle, that comes out to $38 a unit. That's the average cost. Now we multiply that by the number of units sold, which is 40, okay? So that gives us $1,520. That would be the debit to cost of goods sold at this point in time. Now, here's the thing. If we were later to sell some more inventory, we would have to calculate a new average cost. That's why this is also called the moving average method. Okay, when you use a perpetual inventory system and you do this average cost, you don't always just take it as that this $38 a unit if there are future sales and so forth. We'll see that when we go to calculate the ending inventory balance. Okay, so let's move ahead uh, because now, so we've got our cost of goods sold, but then at the end of the period, okay, let's say like January 15th or something. Let's say that's the end of the, the fiscal month or something. So at the end of the period, now we have to say, okay, what's the ending inventory? Okay, the ending inventory. And now when we go to figure the ending inventory as of like January 15th, now we do care about the 25 units uh, that were purchased on the 13th because now it's it's the end of the period and we're going to try and figure uh, what the ending inventory is for the, for, the, for the month or the fiscal period. Okay, so do that is a little trickier because now we don't just take the $38 a unit and then multiply it by the 35 units that are in the ending inventory. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering how I know that there are 35 units in ending inventory, remember that there were 75 units total okay, that were purchased at some point and then we sold 40. So that's why there are 35 in ending inventory. So to do that, what we do is we could say, okay, look, before when we had the the weighted or the average cost of $38 a unit, we multiplied it by 40. Okay, that was what we sold, but there were actually 50 units in inventory at that time. So, one way to think about it is okay, we had 10 units that were calculated at a cost of $38 a unit. So, or you could just think if you want to just think about 380, 
there were 380 of costs that did not go to cost of goods sold at that point in time. Okay, either way you want to think about it is fine, but then later we make an additional purchase of 25 units at $50 a unit. Okay, so we add all those costs together and divide by the number of units that are in ending inventory. Again, this is not as of January 8th. Now this is the end of the quarter, the end of the fiscal month, whatever, January 15th, the end of the period. We're trying to figure what is the ending inventory. Okay, so we take all the costs that are remaining and we divide it by the 35 units that are in ending inventory, and then we multiply by 35. Now, you might say this doesn't make a lot of sense. These cancel out, and I'm just doing this so you don't need to do that. You could just take this whole amount and say that that's the ending inventory, 1,630. But if there was a series of transactions, uh, you know, over and over again, where you buy some more inventory, you sell some, you buy some more, you sell some, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm writing this all out so you understand that you constantly have to recompute uh, the average cost. Okay, so in this case, the average cost now would be $46.57. Again, in this example, because it's a really simple example where there's no sales after this, there's just the one sale here and then we buy some more inventory. In this simple example, you, these would cancel out and you wouldn't even have to worry about it. But the idea is, if we have a series of time where we buy inventory, sell inventory, each time you sell inventory, you need to figure that cost of goods sold. You have to calculate a new average cost. Okay, so here I'm just you know going full full scale and, and doing all the calculations, but you know to, to kind of simulate more like real life. So the ending inventory in this case would be 1,630. All right. Now, what if? What if the company were to do a physical count of the inventory and they said, okay, we actually went and counted the inventory and we only have $1,600 of inventory on hand at the end of the period, okay? Now, we just calculated uh, based on this average cost method that the ending inventory was 1630 So if we're saying, well, we counted and there's actually less inventory than that on hand, well, now we've got an issue, okay? We're going to have to make an adjusting journal entry and we're going to have to somehow recognize that we have less inventory on hand than what we thought. Okay, so we could debit cost of goods sold for $30 and then credit inventory for $30. We can make that adjusting entry. But some companies, uh, instead of debiting at cost of goods sold, they debit like other expense and say like inventory shortage or something like that. Maybe some inventory was stolen. Okay, so if, if the, in this hypothetical scenario where we only have $1,600 of inventory on hand, then at the end of the period, ultimately, we would have ending inventory of $1,600, and then cost of goods sold will be $1,550 because we, we adjusted that $30 uh, to the $1,520. And again, not all companies do it like that. Some of them would try and like bury it in other expenses or something like that. And again, also, this is a hypothetical scenario of what if the physical we, we actually counted the inventory and it was off. If we didn't do that, and we didn't do a count or anything like that, then we'd just say, well, cost of goods sold was 1,520, ending inventory was 1,630, and that's the end of the story. 